food. What I found about it, it's, it's like a Jamaican word. It's very clean. Drama. When I went in there, it was crazy. Chris had one job. Cookie fish, Chris. Verdict. It could go either way. Six countries sent their best chefs to plead their case. Who will take home the 10,000 US dollars award? All rise for the Maggie Food Court Caribbean, season three. Previously on Maggie Food Court Caribbean, 16 chefs were placed into four teams of four. Each team went pot to pot in a four by four relay style team battle. Teams A and D won their respective battles and came out on top, whilst teams B and C lost, finding themselves in the Court of Appeal. In this episode, the jurors must decide the fate of the losing teams. How will they redeem themselves? Can they appeal to the judge? This is the Team Appeal. This culinary case is presided over by Maggie Food Court Judge, Jaron Geronimo Green. Welcome to episode two of Maggie Food Court Caribbean. Today, four chefs will be going home, but who will? That remains a mystery. Our jury members are Business Executive Officer of Nestle Caribbean, Okino Petre, Celebrity Chef, Adrian Fort, and cooking show host from the Food Network, Roger Mucking. In order to win their appeal, the team of four losing chefs from episode one are split into two teams of two and must battle their former allies for a chance to move into the next round. Now, let's go to court. It's friend turned foe in the Mystery Basket Team Appeal. All right, Judge Geronimo presiding. Chefs, welcome back to Maggie Food Court. Today, you have a chance at redemption. In this challenge, you'll be competing in groups of two. It is required that you'll use the items in your mystery basket to create the very best dish you can in 30 minutes. This is the Team Appeal. The defendants are divided into four teams of two and have 30 minutes to prepare any dish using ingredients found in their mystery basket. On team one, we have chefs Chris and Okari. On team two, we have chefs Kawami and Samara. Are you ready? Yes. Your time begins now. All right, so it's a brand new opportunity for these chefs that didn't do so well in the previous challenges. We have Okari and Chris versus Kawain and, and Samara. The items in the mystery basket are Bassa Filet, Honey Nut Cheerios, and Maggi Coconut Milk Powder. Right now, I believe based on how they both performed earlier, I'm not able to say or have any favorites in this one. Tacos, we're making tacos. I have corn shell. We're doing a coconut crusted fried fish. Okay, so they're working on that, and I will include honey nut cherries. So I'm noticing a big difference between the teams here. With Kowain and Samara, she looked like she's in charge. She's just saying, this is what we're doing, which I kind of admire her for. So when I opened the basket, I saw bassa filet, coconut, coconut milk, and um, Cheerios, I was like, okay, this is something we could take and turn into something really nice. So I immediately thought, tacos, we only had 30 minutes. Didn't want to overshoot and not finish. I would have preferred to do something simple, but elevated. Whether she advances or whether she goes home, she wants to make sure that she's in charge of what's happening and she can live with that decision. But it's coming across as a little bit as she's the chef and he's the sous chef where, as you can see, he's just kind of, you know, taking directions and orders from her. Yeah. And I think, you know, in this kind of strategy like that, as much as a teamwork, a team also needs a leader. Yeah. And it needs to have a definitive vision. You know, Steve Jobs, there wasn't 20 Steve Jobs, right? He laid out the vision and the team executes. So I think that, you know, if you take that approach going in with Samara and, uh, with Samara and Kawame, I feel very optimistic about just the energy coming off of their plates. And I think that that will translate into what we see. Yeah, and it's a big risk per se with Kamami because he would have followed her already in the in the previous episode, right? And they would not have won. I think she was the one that plated the dish. She was the finisher of that team. And usually you find the finisher is the one that's making the final decisions, putting it together. And he has, again, come back to, of course, lean into her direction. And so we're going to hope that it pays off for him. Okay. Is it a cheerio? 
I use that as a what coconut milk. We are using couscous. I could make a reduction with the coconut milk. With Kari and Chris, they have like a nice chemistry going on. They're moving around. They're kind of smooth. Kind of looks like ballet in the kitchen. I think they have now 30 minutes in which to prepare a dish. But I think they all seem a little bit too relaxed and composed. Um, they're yeah. about, give me best fish. Mm -hmm. And you give me and best. May I give you some couscous to go with the coconut right. milk? And we, we, need some some the we need some peels as well. Huh? Yeah. <clears throat> when I saw the ingredient, automatically I think to myself, cherry, oh, we could use it to do some form of crust, some form of toppings. When I saw the coconut milk right away, um, couscous came to mind. Cause you know, coconut milk goes great with couscous and it's, it doesn't take a very long time to cook. I mean, the challenge did not scare me any at all. I just you know, put my best foot forward and come up with the best dish possible. These people, when they come for redemption, because they were in the bottom of the rung of the ladder, they really feel like they have something to show. So, Kawima and I, we made a curry and coconut milk crusted no, basa. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So we fry that. Next one, next bread one. So, yeah. hint or not, meg or not? Yeah, well, probably like a cinnamon. Okay, well, it have cinnamon in it. We put that on a blue corn taco. Listen, this yellow mix in here, put some in there, it's a curry, it's a curry spice. It was a very rustic taco. Yeah, nobody would have, and I think nobody would have expected yeah, to cook taco shell like no, a 30 minute challenge. My feet, it was risky. If I can't touch it, it's hot. On top of that, we've made a mango, black bean, bell pepper, tomato salsa using Maggi pepper sauce. And a trio crunch. We took the honey nut cheerios, we crushed it with a bit of scotch bonnet and honey, toasted that off. Added a bit of feta. With a slice of lime. Chef Sam, what are you making there? Um, currently salsa. Salsa. A coconut curry fried fish on some tacos. Coconut curry fried fish on what? Tacos. On tacos, and I see you have the tropical fruits, the mangoes and... We're trying, we're trying. All right. Are you making this together or are you, what are yeah, you Yeah, yeah, we're working together. He's working on the honey nut cherry or crunch and I'm going to press the taco shells. Awesome, awesome. Carry on. Chef Okari, what's going on over here? What are you making? What we're doing here, we're doing a coconut couscous. Coconut couscous. Yeah, man, and uh, we're just going to add some farmer uh, fish to that. So I um, add some mangoes to that couscous, add the coconut milk, the herbs, the butter, season it well, cover it down and just let it steam. And um, it was great. I went about setting those cherries in the blender, add a few herbs to it, um, melted some butter to set in there as well. What are you going to do with the fish? I'll crust it up. Four plates, right? One thing I would say, I would want to see more technicality and more innovation out of the application of the Cheerios versus them just both crusting it, you know? Give me something fun and innovative, maybe make a twill out of it or, you know, just jazz it up a little versus just... Some fish cereal? Yeah! <laughs> fish cereal? <laughs> All right, very nice. Okay, guys, so by the way, just so you know, uh, two people will be leaving us in this round, all right? So keep that in mind while you make your star dish. I'll leave you to cook. Think about it statistically, right? 12 chefs are advancing now and four are going home. So it's more likely that you could have advanced than it is that you are indeed going home. Let's see if the statistic will work in their favor. So yeah, I feel a little boss off right now. Um, you know, long days, just a little tired. Maybe a little um, disappointed after having to reach this part of the competition, getting being in the bottom two after episode one. So I'm feeling it a little, but I'm in good spirits. Well, I don't think my partner would say we did anything different. Or I feel it was shared a role making the salsa, 
frying off the fish. We just check each other over, touch each other, just make sure that everything coming along. I said in the first round that Chris, I didn't want to be in a group with Chris, so I wish I didn't say that because Chris was actually a good team member in this round. Um, we, we went through basically great, as I said, and everything was just on point. So, um, I'm going to change nothing. I feel like that did all right. It was simple. Our communication, me and Okari, was just on point. He knew what he had to do, I knew what I had to do. Now, in this instance, they're not sharing the work across four people, so they can bring a little bit more of their own personality into a two-person dynamic, you know? And they're both in the kitchen at the same time. There's no mystery, you don't need to complete what I'm doing. It's also a shorter time. Fish coming up. All right. With a spoon in there. Spoons. What do you need? Spoon. Just use this. Contestants, you have five minutes remaining. Five minutes. I didn't feel any way intimidated by the time because I knew that we were already done. I was, I was under a little pressure, but um, I think Chef thrives under pressure, so it, it was okay for me. The fact that we made an amazing dish, so if we go home after that, we basically did our best. And um, nothing beats our best, so if you do our, be our best, there's nothing more we could have done. And um, it was just beautiful for me. I hope I'm gonna move on to the next round. And if I don't, by some unfortunate stroke of luck, I am pleased with what I gave the judges. We do not have any more carrots, man. Fish, right there. No, 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 put it on. Don't put it on it. Food look better with a high of height. Oh. So you want to give some farmer height, yeah? All right. Yeah. Three, two, one. All right, chef, step away from the counter. Your time for cooking has expired. That was a pretty intense battle. You guys really turned the heat up on this one. All right, so chef Kawem, how do you guys feel about your dish? Um, it's a rustic taco, so... Um, Hopefully we shine. Awesome, awesome. Chef Chris and Chef Okari, <laughs> how do you feel about your dish? We feel very happy with it. Man. I feel like we have a lot of mixture, a lot of taste, a lot of different yeah. flavors. So it's Jamaica right. meat with St. Lucia there, so. That's great, that's great. But as you know, the final decision is up to the jurors. So we will present your dishes to the jury for adjudication. It's time to present the dishes to the jury. Tell us about your dish. Uh, well, we have here right now is a rustic taco, blue corn shell, and coconut curry basa with a cherry crumble with a feta juice with a coconut flake. A slice of life. What did you come up with the idea? First of all, she said tacos. When you come to taco, you get spicy, nice, rustic. So we did a mango salsa for just to bring up the sweetness. Guys, a lot of spice, a lot of kick. And then we just put the feta of rice to make that drizzle to cool it down. With the coconut flakes, it just add a little sweetness. The Cheerios is just a crumble on top. Crumble on top. Yeah. We tried to use all the components that was given. So I hope you enjoy the dish. All right, thank you. I think the presentation is very good. It's a very colorful plate. Definitely something that I would buy at a restaurant just by the looks of it. Crumb they made as honey and sriracha is nice, you know? It's a nice balance of the, the chili. The true test of a taco is if you can pick it up and it don't fall apart though, you know? Yeah. So far, so good. Wow. Think it's nice. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of different flavor, you know? It gets me mm -hmm. savory, fruit, fish, feta, salty. It all works well, you know? I think we can invite the next team in. 
Gentlemen, what do you have for us today? Basically, what we have for you guys is mixture of both cultures. This dish is called Jam Lucia. I'm from Jamaica, my friend here is from St. Lucia. So we came together quickly and just came up with something nice. We had um, some Cheerios working with, so we made a herb butter Cheerio Bassa. And um, you know, our culture is a coconut, so we infuse some coconut milk and some mangoes into the couscous. And we have a nice, beautiful puree beneath that with some herb tomato that was basically sauteed. I hope you guys do enjoy. Well, what technique or application did you use to, for the Cheerios? So I was the one which uh, took care of it, but I went on with uh, having the Cheerios blended and add a little um, butter in there with the herbs um, and like um, parsley, rosemary, a little bit of cilantro. I uh, salted it up, uh, give it a little bit of maggi seasoning uh, as well. Just and a little lime juice just to um, kill the sweetness of that sweet cherry. I actually got it to a point that it was a little bit too wet, but I had to go and do it the old fashioned way of putting it in a Ziploc bag and smashing it to get it to the consistency that I felt very happy with. And so I just want to be clear, you infuse the butter with Cheerios, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay, and then you cook the, the protein in that butter? No. Protein was cooked by itself, came up there about, I prepared the crust with the herbs, with the melted butter. Okay. So pepper, a little bit of lime juice in there. What was it like working as a team? From the time I've been working a lot with Tim, so it wasn't difficult. So I believe that we had lack a little bit of communication, that's why we end up reaching where we are today and then we are looking for redemption right now. Me and him, we went through well. But at first they asked us who didn't want on my team and I said him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got him on my team and we communicated well and I feel like he executed well and he played an important role and together we brought it together well, you know? All right, thank you, Chef. Yes, you enjoy it. All right, let's dig in. I think the plate is, is quite visually appealing. There are lots of flowers on this one. I think this, yeah man, this is a little mint. This, is this a daffodil? What's this? You guys are chefs, what's this? Purple. It's a good, the last purple chicken. <laughs> it has an interesting mix of flavor. My fish isn't cooked. My fish isn't cooked? Ooh. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's not good. Yeah, it's really not cooked for real. It's not cooked. I like the couscous. Yeah, I thought the couscous was gonna be overcooked because he, he kept adding more liquid more liquid more liquid but but it's packed you know you should fluff couscous you know and it'll be light it's a little bit packed and dense but once you start to break it it's nice it has nice flavor it's well seasoned i feel like all the components work separately mm -hmm. but i don't know if they work together this is the conundrum and therein will lie the, the penultimate problem yeah. all right i think it's time for us to deliberate. Let's hear what the jury has to say. So that was certainly interesting. We had two great teams with wonderful ingredients to work with, but a huge contrast in the way they decided to approach their dishes. I mean, on one end, you know, with Kwame and Samara, they made a beautiful taco, very balanced. It was giving me a lot of different flavors, everything from heat to acidity. You know, it was just, to me, it was, it was a great taco. And the way how they implemented the Cheerio as a crumble, I think that was very innovative. You know, I think this one was really about an exercise in teamwork. And you could see how the spirit of the energy of the team really translated to the plate. You know, we always say in cooking competitions, we want to see your personality on the plates. And I think that this challenge really showed the personality of the groups on the plates respectively, you know? I think the team with Samara and, and Kwame, they were a little bit more organized, a little bit more balanced and they worked together as a team but then the other team that had Akari and Chris I think they set out to to do something that they were not able to complete by the end of the the time given in the challenge because even though they cooked the fish it would have made a very good sushi in my opinion <laughs> and primarily because of the texture and it was just severely undercooked I mean you're coming for 10,000 US dollars you flying from all the way through so many flights to get here and so many hurdles You've got to make sure that when you come, you are bringing your A game. And I think their, their performance was a little bit underwhelming. I mean, even though your fishes weren't cooked, mine was cooked, and I still think the dish just didn't work. I felt like I could see both of their culinary personalities fighting for space on the plate. Which is interesting because they call the dish Jalusha. <laughs> so it's like they were trying to bring the two things together. Remind me of I used to come up with this man's and his name was Joanne because the mother's name was Janet and the father's name was Wayne. 
but it just didn't work in this case. Yeah. Bailey? Juras, have you reached your verdict? Yes. Chefs, very good to try at redemption. Team two, you created a taco that wowed the palates of the jurors, showcasing flavors of the Caribbean, spices, and everything that was nice. Team one, it seems your fish was still swimming, and because it was undercooked, you'll both be going home. I'm feeling very ecstatic right now. I feel very proud of myself. We'll wind out and execute it and we'll do our best. So I'm extremely happy. Not going home so early made me feel very proud of myself. And if I did drop out in the first one, I could go back to work. I wouldn't leave it down, so I'm proud of leave. I'm happy because of that. Very, very happy. I feel good after that challenge. I felt a little sad because the faces of the opposing team, they were they looked really dejected. So I felt kind of bad to celebrate, but I felt I felt quite happy that we made it through that round. The showing I had in the last round gives a glimpse of some of my talent, some of my skills, what I can do as a chef. So I feel like it really showcased me a bit compared to the first round. So to Chris and Dice, I would not feel dejected after it, after leaving from this round. Literally only they start of big things to come. So good luck guys. I am going home proud knowing that I did my best. It doesn't stop here. Um, we have a lot of things going towards. We have a lot of goals that we want to achieve and a lot of places we want to go. Part of what I do is basically train chef for different Airbnbs all across the island. You don't think about nothing else when you come on to him work. Basically, it motivates me to do what I'm doing right now because this is what I'm doing right now. I never see myself doing it. My journey basically started in Top Chalani. It's creative both in mind and in skills. It's never a normal plate with, with dice. I kind of lay back out of the kitchen. He's always in the kitchen. When you talk about Jamaican cuisine, you have to mention like, our pimento, our ginger, our spices, balancing out them and creating any perfect dish with those simple ingredients. I feel disappointed. You understand? Because I'm sure we have that one in the bag. I'm sure the food have the flavors. I'm sure the food have the taste we're supposed to have. Chris had one job. Chris, cookie fish. Cookie fish, Chris. Really, really upset. Upset. Upset, upset, upset. Judges are telling me that I got eliminated because my fish was undercooked. There is no way in heaven that can happen and I don't believe in that. So therefore that still have me upset, triggered at it. I wasn't the actual person to even say, okay, I'm gonna go to the competition. Is my supporters and people which are my friends and a lot of other chefs, they was like, boy, you have it. Well, go and represent the island into this competition. I'm a private chef working with a lot of the high-end fillers on the island. My life as a chef, it has been good. I believe that everyone is put on earth for a certain reason and I believe mine was in food. I used to be the one to always take my mom's groceries and be cooking all on the streets with my friends. I went to school, I did a subject called food and nutrition. That's the only subject I could say I wouldn't skip a class for. Selling that while at school, I met a um, executive chef. I told him, Yo, you know what, I want to learn to cook. And I stayed at that resort for like seven years throughout getting all the awards and left there and became a youngest executive chef on the island. In order to win their appeal, the team of four losing chefs from episode one are split into two teams of two and must battle their former allies for a chance to move into the next round. All right, fellas, so I'm, I'm super excited about this round because the last time we saw these chefs, we weren't able to eat anything. So I really want to see what each chef can do, what they're going to put on a plate and just represent and hold it down, you know? They're going to go home if they don't bring it this time. It's friend turned foe in the Mystery Basket Team Appeal. Let's meet the chefs of teams three and four. On team three, we have chefs Antonio and Shamika. On team four, we have chefs Kern and Wei Hao Hong. It's time to cook. All right, fellas, so I'm, I'm super excited about this round because the last time we saw these chefs, we weren't able to eat anything. So I really want to see 
what each chef can do, what they're gonna put on the plate, and just represent and hold it down, you know? They're gonna go home if they don't bring it this time. Chefs, welcome back to Maggie Food Court. In the last episode, you were in the bottom two teams. But in this episode, you have a chance at redemption. You have 30 minutes in which to cook a dish worthy of 10,000 US dollars. You will have full access to the fridge and to the pantry. Chefs, at the end of this segment, two of you will be going home. So cook for your life. Your time begins now. We're gonna make one. Cross. Cross. The items in the mystery basket are Bassa Filet, Honey Nut Cheerios, and Maggie Coconut Milk Powder. This time it's fish. They have 30 minutes. It's much simpler. I expect that Wei Hao and the Kern is going to do something that we can actually taste versus the last fish, time. Go fish, go. Cuts. Fish cakes. You want fish cakes? Yeah. You want, you want. You want to but I mean, Antonia and Shamika, they are also good, good contenders as well. You know what's interesting about this round? Because they're coming from like the bottom of the heap, let's say. There, there enters like a certain psychological play here where you, you feel like you're beaten a little bit, a little bit of abuse. So you kind of have to rebuild your confidence to come back into this round, but also you feel that much more like you have to redeem yourself. Kern had a plan, Kern had an idea. Um, I was like, okay, it sounds good. A chair crusted basil on a bed of plantain and yam puree with a mango salsa and a coconut curry sauce. So it looks like Weho and Kern are doing uh, a fish cake. Right? So it's interesting because I saw Weho there chopping up the, the basa and I wasn't sure if he was going to do a ceviche, like blanch it and toss it in something. And so it's interesting to see that he's doing that. I imagine going to add some kind of egg and some other filler to it to make it come up to fish cake. Antonio and Shamika, though, I'm a little concerned that how they're using their time. They're going meticulously slow in a 30-minute challenge, and usually you'd want to speed some these kind of challenges up just in case you make an error. You have enough time to start over. I try my best to ensure that I'm able to communicate clear with my fellow uh, team member, and we were in sync in terms of you know understanding what we got to get and pushing forward to ensure that we had a complete dish. Chefs, well, it seems rather silent in here. I don't see any cooking going on. All right, so Chef Antonio, what what what, what are you making? All right, so we're going with uh, having the fish crusted. We're gonna do a pumpkin puree along with a starch. And what's the starch? What's the starch? We we still working. You're still that. okay. All right, all right. So Chef, we how? I don't see much action going on over here. What are you, oh, this is some chopped basa. What are you making here? Um, we're making a crusted basa. It's like a fish cake, almost. Fish cake? Yeah. Okay. Um, it's going to be crusted in the Cheerios. And then we're going to make a coconut sauce. All right, so crusted fish cake with coconut sauce. All right, all right, so I'll leave you to it. Just remember that this, <laughs> your entire stake in this competition is dependent on how you perform in this challenge. All right, chefs? I'll leave you to it. Bye. The Cheerio Crusted Bassa Croquette. Or if it's a crab cake, we did that with a plantain and yam mash. 
also a mango salsa as well as a coconut curry sauce too much up, too much up. to be honest i felt like my teammate literally fidgets fidgeted his way through the 30 minutes Spread, right? Yeah. Oh, why am I using about this? Uh, I food processor going so? We have no. food processor. I want cutting for it. It, it. it is not working. Chemistry is going to be the real deciding factor here, apart from as well the flavor and how they put everything together. Because we saw from the earlier teams where they struggled a little primarily because they didn't have that chemistry. So that's going to be a determining factor here. Where is it? Yeah. Cheerios. Right, 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 right. You need some of the Cheerios to bread the thing. But I think that is enough. Probably. To be honest, two people, professional chefs cooking in 30 minutes, you could do a lot. You could do a lot. So I, the expectation is high. Bring some flour when you come in. I don't think I'm doing my best because I think I have so much more to bring to the table, so I need to come out of that nerve-wracking stage. But it takes time and I'm working on it. I feel like the pressure and the anxiety of this competition is getting to the chefs, where they just lose sight of what they need to do, and they start to rush towards the end to try to make up for lost time. You go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead, you go ahead. I have this, you go ahead, you go ahead. Somebody had to take charge. Uh, I mean, it's two of us. Somebody had to take charge. Somebody had to follow. If he did everything else, I wanted to play it, and I had an idea of how I wanted to how I wanted things to play. But just again, time was upon us. Um, you know, 30 minutes will just start, and it will just disappear. Contestants, you have five minutes remaining. Five minutes. New fish bun. The fish burn. Just to put it out there, the fish burn. I know fish is very delicate, we have to pay attention, but I took a risk and it paid off versus having two or more elements off. Oh, you coming? Run it on this. Oh. While in the bustle of things, I started the curry sauce. It's actually um, burnt. While I was starting, I forgot it. Doing other things, had to start that over. Yeah, and I started that probably like within the five, last five minutes, so I kind of had to rush it. Just get a quick shallow fry, brother. You ain't have time to fight it. All right, it's down to a nail biting finish. They have four minutes. We how just put in the fish cakes? No, no, they uh -huh. just put the oil in the pan to heat up to make the fish cake. And then Antonio, who you thought were not using their time very well, they are now plating while Weha is still there cooking. See now he has, he has the fish cakes done, but that oil is not as hot as it should be. At this yeah. point, that has to go in the deep fry. It's late now because now it's suck up oil, yeah. but they should have just gone in the deep fry at that point. What if you flattened it a little bit more? Would that allow it to cook a little faster? It could, but it also, depending on the consistency of the fish cake, it could break up more too, uh, right? So it's a fine balance based on the consistency. I didn't see the consistency well. Okay. Now he's basting the top of the fish cake with the oil, trying to get it to cook. The side's ready. You season it. You season it? Yeah. You still not um, sear off the, the... Even if he does manage to cook it in the, in the last few minutes, it's gonna be greasy and oily and it's not gonna have a nice crust on it, so... We'll see, it's interesting. Oh. 
how they're using their time hasn't been so efficient. It's true, and it's deceiving, you know, because you're in the pressure cooker of, of this kitchen and you lose track of time. And before you know it, that red light come flashing on you and it's like, oh God, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's why mise en place is so critical to cooking, you know? You come in, you have a plan, you set yourself up, and then you execute. Yeah. Pull the mango salsa, the mango salsa on top. Also, once again, I want to see innovation. I want to see people being creative, and I think just crusting the, the basa in some Cheerios is not really anything, you know, new and exciting. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to seeing further during the competition, the chefs really, really bringing it. These are supposed to be the best chefs in the Caribbean, right? So we really want to see what they can do. All right, chefs, so your time is up in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Step away from the counter, chefs. I know you will all agree that this was a very intense challenge, but let us see if it was enough to redeem. Okay, so as you know, your dishes have to be presented to the jurors for adjudication. <laughs> if they know, but we're going to show them one ball, the ball today. <laughs> it's time to present the dishes to the jury. Chefs, what do you have for us today? Shamika and I both prepared a uh, rustic uh, mashed potato, which incorporates cherry tomatoes and a planting for a bit of sweetness. We have a coconut reduction sauce that you, will, that you will enjoy with pumpkin, of course. And the fish has been crusted with the Cheerios along with some herbs. And you also have a mango salsa to complement the entire meal. What was it like working together this time around? Nerve working very good. All right, thank you. I think we got three different texture of fish because yours look a little softer, mine actually. I can do a little instrument thing with mine. I got that too. Yeah, you got and it. The first between this piece is soft. Yeah. Soft a tan. Yeah, mine also has a tan. So on mine, I bleach. <laughs> You're the bleach. <laughs> Let's see how it tastes. Mine is lacking a little flavor. We definitely need some seasoning. Yeah. Also, I noticed mine is dark on the other side, so it's not really bleaching properly. And they just flip it to kind of hide. The fact that it, it's burnt on the other side. Yeah, it's it's mine is completely burnt on this side for sure. It's very crispy. I do like the sauce actually. My favorite thing is the sauce and the mango. Not the mango salsa, the mango. <laughs> mine with specific <laughs> kind of eats like a warm potato salad. Yeah, yeah. With some sweet to it that's kinda of funny. That's the plant in it, yeah. Yeah. I think this was the team that had the, that was moving at a really snail pace, so they had enough time to do whatever it is that they wanted to do because they didn't they didn't feel like they were rushing so I feel like this is their absolute best. But yeah, I would give it to Roger. This sauce, whatever it is, is very delicious, but ultimately the question is this. Is that worth ten thousand dollars? Absolutely not. A six thousand five me. Jamaican? <laughs> <laughs> they must something a hundred dollars. <laughs> Alright, let's see the next set of contestants. Chefs, what do you prepare for us? So hey, we prepared a Cheerio crusted basa croquette as well as a plantain and yam mat with a mango salsa and a coconut curry sauce. So your croquette is like a classic croquette and you make the bechamel, you fold in the starch, you put the thing, like the whole, like all of that? No, not really, more Jamaican style. Like more like a fish cake. A fish cake, yeah. Oh, fish cake. Okay. So no potato, like... Okay. So. Oh. All right, thank you, chefs. All right, guys, let's dig in. I feel like it's mango season. We're getting so much mango. I think the plate doesn't have much color. It's just very bland in terms of how it looks and comes across. It's, it doesn't have any color. Mm -mm. 
This sauce, I wouldn't serve it. Hey, way too much turmeric. Bitter. Yeah, it does have too much and it lingers as well. How can you taste anything else or enjoy anything else after you eat that? Yeah, you can. Just overpower everything. And then the aesthetics of the dish, I mean, this almost looks like chicken thighs. They, they, they could have spent some more time developing the look of the fish cakes. Well, look at this, right? You have two professional chefs with 30 minutes. And that's 60 combined minutes of effort. I would look at this and say they gave them 60 seconds. Yeah. It just doesn't come together. It feels very rushed. As if they had just, as you mentioned, just a minute to prepare this. But this is what they, they showcase as their best dish. So I think it's time for us to deliberate. Let's hear what the jury has to say. You know, going into this, my expectation was that they knew they were at a challenged state, compromised state, and that they would raise themselves up to really bring the best of themselves to the thing. And I have to be honest, both teams, if this is what their best is, I, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, the first team for me, the fish, you know, it was a little bit burnt. I mean, if it fell on my foot the wrong day, I'd probably have to go to the hospital. But the second one as well, there was just no flavor. And I feel like you're in the Maggie kitchen where there's unlimited resources to get your meal together. The basics that it should have is flavor. And then the sauce, the little yellow thing on the side, that was just too much turmeric. It was very bitter. It wasn't something that we could consume. But I feel like it's an injustice to send through any one of them. So I want to know what you guys think. I agree. I think it's at this point, it's a race to the bottom, you know what I mean? And these are supposed to be the best chefs that the Caribbean has to offer. So they really have to bring it. This is not an amateur competition. It's a professional chef competition. So at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to taste, technique, creativity, but taste is king. And unfortunately, neither dish tasted good. So, you know. But the whole purpose of the competition, of course, is always to select somebody to go through to the next round. And maybe this will be an important lesson to those two that will advance, that they will rise to the occasion on the next turn. I think it's time for us to call in the bailiff. Viewers, have we came to our decision? Absolutely. Chef, the verdict is in. You are given 30 minutes and access to the finest, freshest herbs and Maggi spices to create a dish worthy of 10,000 US dollars. Your performance was disappointing at best. Your fish was burnt. That curry sauce failed to live up to expectation. The fish cake was oily and just did not hit a spot. Just by your sauce, you took this round. When you enter the Maggi food court, we expect just the highest level of culinary finesse. You'll move on and you both Chef Kern and Chef Weihau will be going home. I'm very much grateful to survive because it was nerve wracking to having to cook in two rungs. My team mate and I won the knockout round. It was very intense, uh, definitely. We strategized in terms of what we wanted to do and we execute, however, we had a small miss up in between, but we still came out victorious. I'm feeling, I'm not 100% happy why, because I think there was more to put to the table, but at the same time, I'm like 50% okay, but I know I have to put on my A game next trip, because I think I have so much more to bring to the table, so I need to come out of that nerve-wracking stage, but it takes time and I'm working on it. Feeling a bit disappointed, of course, but I'm um, still happy in myself to know that I did my absolute best given the circumstance. But it, it was exciting. Um, I really enjoyed it. Wish the circumstance was different, but I accept my fate. I'm Chef Kuhn Thomas. We are currently at my kitchen, Thel Experience Catering, here in 
La Romaine San Fernando. It's been a great journey thus far, I must say. From an early age, I was always interested in the kitchen. I always knew I had a passion for food. Never really been to culinary school, but I have amassed a wealth of experience over the years. He loves cooking and cooking is good. He is excellent. He, is, he has mastered his street. He makes the most amazing curry dishes ever. <laughs> Every position in the kitchen you could think of, I've been there. It's been quite a journey, I must say. You need to promote yourself as a brand now to really sell anything. And I thought to myself, the Maggie Food Court competition would be the perfect opportunity to do such. Yes, good. <laughs> Your family loves you. They appreciate you. In my book, you're already a winner. Um, disappointed. To be honest, I was just trying to get everything done as quickly as possible. Um, time was upon us. Um, you know, 30 minutes will just start and it will just... I see myself going into maybe private catering. I kind of grew up around food. My aunt's a chef and she was like, why don't you try your hand at this? Soon after, I kind of fell in love with it. Jason was the person who first introduced me to something called chicken parmesan. He was about 15. He had made it for his dad's father's day at the time. And he gave me the recipe and I have used it in my catering business over and over. It's a hit. A chef told me once, um, less is more, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff to make a dish. When I was younger, I would watch Food Network. There was a talent chef that kind of based my cooking around that. Being Asian Jamaican, see what type of Jamaican spices could mix into this, or what kind of Asian dishes that goes well with pasta. Well, Jace, I'm rooting for you. I am behind you. I know you can do it. And I'm going to just say massive tough. Next time on Maggie Food Court Caribbean, 12 chefs now remain standing to enter the grueling knockout rounds. Only six can move on and six must go home. Who will make it? This is the Knockout Rounds. This is Mackie Food Court Caribbean.